Hi everyone, I am Lauren Buckner from the placeforbusymoms.com and I just recently created a new Facebook group for daily devotions because sometimes it's not always easy for us to get those daily devotions in. Life gets hectic, it gets busy, and so the purpose of this new Facebook group is to remind you to take time, slow down, and recharge your soul. Because if you don't put time into yourself with God every day, then you're going to be cranky, moody, mean, and it's all going to come out to the family. And that's just not wise. You know, it's always good to take that time, spend it with God, and you're going to find that your soul is lifted up. You're going to be happy. You're going to have more joy. Things aren't going to seem as dramatic. And your family is going to notice that, and they're going to appreciate that as well. So today I want to read a little bit out of this new devotional by Ted Decker that I am currently doing. Um, I don't want to take away from Ted Decker, so I'm only going to read a few paragraphs, and that'll be it. Oh, and I will tell you a little bit about what I got out of it. So, this meditation is Peace in the Storm. Think of your life as a boat on the stormy seas. The boat represents all that you think will keep you safe from drowning. Dark skies block out the sun. Wind tears at your face. Angry waves rise to sweep you off of your treasured boat and send you into a deep, watery grave. And so you cringe in fear as you cling to the boat that you believe will save you from suffering. But Yeshua is at peace. How can he be at rest in the midst of such a terrible threat? When you cry out in fear, he rises and looks out at the storm, totally unconcerned. Why are you afraid? He asks. Has he gone mad? Does he not see the reason to fear? Does he not see the cruel husband, the cancer, the terrified children, the abuse, the injustice, the empty bank account, the rejection at the hands of friends, the assault of enemies, the killing of innocents. How could he ask such a question? For those that don't know, Ted Decker is a Christian author that's been around for a while, and his stuff can get a little dark sometimes. But what you may not know about Ted Decker is that's because his life has been a little dark at times. Ted Decker was the son of missionaries to cannibals. Wow. <laughs> so the stuff that he writes about stems from true life horror. Okay. Now, Ted Decker could have grown up to be a cannibal. He could have grown up to be a killer. He could have grown up to be bitter, to be full of hate. But that's not what he did. Tech, Ted Decker grew up looking for love, looking for light in the midst of darkness. And that's what he writes about. And, you know, I think that's really what separates the Christians from the non-Christians, is we all have a story. But do we look for the light in our stories? So he mentioned... The abusive husband, the cancer, um, we could throw our own things in there, you know, child with special needs, you could put empty bank account in there, and all these different things, and you could add them to you. They are part of your story. I was in an abusive marriage. I have cancer. I have a child with special needs. We are struggling financially. We may lose the house. There's bitterness in here. There's anger in here. And we put all these things on us. And they shield us. And soon the world sees that as our story. And we see each other. That's okay. To have that on you is what we say. We understand. Yes, put that on you. Let that be your burden. That's how we treat life. Is it not? And so we create this armor of really just darkness on us. And it's because we don't want anything to hurt a heart 
more than it's already been hurt. So we put this here. We put that there. We shield it. We don't want you getting near it. But we block out the light when we do that. And so what we could do instead is say, I was in an abusive relationship, but I escaped. I have cancer, but I'm alive. My child has Down syndrome, but God gave me a child full of joy. We could say the bank account is tight. We don't know how we're going to eat tonight, but God provided a meal. So we still have these things that have made us who we are, but it's how we choose to approach them. And pretty soon people are going to look at you and they're going to say, how are you so happy? How do you have so much joy? And you'll get to say, well, let me tell you about this over here. And let me tell you about that over there. We still have the same shield on us, but we've chosen to make it a shield of light <laughs> as the light goes out. <laughs> and, you know, the Bible says, and I hope I don't get this messed up right now because I'm just quoting. <laughs> Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we choose to look at that light, then I think another verse comes into play. And I have only recently discovered this verse. It's in Psalms. You know, <laughs> Psalms is full of many verses. So it's a wonder I'm just now discovering this one. But I adore it and I hope that you will too. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. We are children of the king. The king. The light king. There's no more, there's no greater light than the light that comes from God. And so God never promised that life would be without burden without trials. In fact, he said quite the opposite. But he still wants us to be a light in the dark world. And how are we going to do that if we choose to look at the darkness within our story? Instead, I encourage you today, if you're having a bad day, to find something good in it. You know, maybe your childhood was rough, but you had an awesome childhood friend. Maybe the house is full of hostility right now. But pray and give it to God and say, let me have some moments of laughter. And when you get those moments of laughter, be thankful for them. Be joyous in them. That's all I have today. Bye, y'all.